When we've talked about derivatives so far, we've talked about them in a very formal and time-consuming way. For instance, the instantaneous rate of change, we can think of the slope of the tangent line. And one way to write that is the slope of the tangent line is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Or we could write it as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all divided by h. We can also call that f prime of a, that is the first derivative of a. We've also talked about the derivative as being a function. So instead of at a point a, we can say f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Well, if we had to do this every single time we found a derivative, you know, I, I love math, but I don't love that math this much. So we're going to come up with some general rules that you'll need to memorize. Let's first talk about a constant. That is where f of x equals a number c, and c is going to be a real number. Remember, the derivative is the rate of change of the function. If I have a constant function, there is no rate of change. Therefore, the rate of change is equal to 0. This leads us to our first rule, the constant rule. If I have the derivative with respect to x of c, that equals 0 if c is a real number. The next rule we're going to talk about is the power rule. And before I prove it, and I'm not going to do a lot of proofs, but I am going to do this first proof. But the power rule is if I take the derivative of a variable x raised to the nth power, that's equal to n times x to the n minus 1 power. And let's prove this one. The first thing I'm going to do is take my formal definition and start off with taking the derivative of x. That is x to the first power. So if I let n equal 1, that means f of x is equal to x to the first power or just x. And if I go ahead and use my definition of f prime of a, then I find that I have the limit of x approaching a of x minus a divided by x minus a, which is simply equal to 1, which, by the way, does match my power rule. Let's go ahead and check that. And this looks fine. The n is 1, so the derivative of x to the first power is 1 times x to the 1 minus 1, which is x to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Therefore, my power rule does show that this would, in fact, equal 1. So now let's say n is going to be greater than or equal to 2, and f of x is equal to x to the n power. Now we can say the first derivative of f of a is equal to the limit of x approaching a of x to the n minus a to the n divided by x minus a. There is a factoring rule that we can always factor this x to the n minus a to the n into this. So if I can factor x to the n minus a to the n in this form, I see that, first of all, I've left out the limit. Let me fix that. There we go. And now we see this x minus a divides out of the numerator and denominator, and I'm left with the following. Once I have it in this form, I can go ahead and directly substitute x as a, because this is a polynomial, if we remember our limit laws. If I go ahead and multiply this all out, I have a bunch of just a to the n minus 1s. In fact, it's not just a bunch of a to the n's, there's exactly n of them. And so I get n times a to the n minus 1. If I made this a function, I would find that f prime of x is equal to n times x to the n minus 1, which is what I have for the power rule. This is the only one that I'm going to go through and do a proof of. You don't have to recreate the proof, but you do have to be able to use the power rule. Notice that this power rule actually works in the constant case. That is, if I had a constant, say c, it would be c times x to the 0. By the power rule, that would be 0 times x to the 0 minus 1, but anything times 0 is 0. So the constant rule is really rolled into the power rule. By the power rule, the derivative with respect to x of x to the fifth, that's simply equal to 5 times x to the 5 minus 1, or 5 times x to the fourth. The second one, it would be really tempting to say the derivative with respect to x of 3 to the 6 is 6 times 3 to the fifth power, but of course that's not right because 3 to the 6 is actually a constant. There's no x in there, so this is still equal to 0. Don't fall into that trap. Our next rule is going to be the constant multiple rule. That is, if I take the derivative of a constant c times a function f of x, that's simply equal to c times the derivative of f of x. I've got two examples up here. So my first one is the derivative with respect to x of negative 5, 6, x to the 10th power. So the first thing I'll do is pull out that constant. So I have negative 5, 6, d dx, x to the 10th. Now I'm going to use my power rule, and that gives me negative 5, 6 times 10 times 
x to the 9th power. And if I simplify this, I'll get the following. Negative 25 over 3, x to the 9th power. Now my second example, I'm going to first again use the constant multiple rule to pull out that 1 15th. Notice now I'm taking the derivative with respect to t. It works the same way, whatever my independent variable is. So I've rewritten the square root of t as t to the 1 half power, because those are the same thing. And although I didn't specify, I'm going to go back and say with my power rule that n has to just be a real number. This I didn't prove, and I could, but I'm just not going to. So I'm going to say that using that same power rule, I'm going to get 1 over 15 times 1 half, that's my exponent, times t to the 1 half minus 1 power, or 1 over 15 times 1 half times t to the negative 1 half power. I can rewrite this as such. Generally, if I've started off giving you information in square root form, I'm going to rewrite it as a square root. And t to the negative 1 half, that's just equal to 1 over the square root of t. And that's my final answer. The next rule is the sum rule. That is, the derivative with respect to x of f of x plus g of x is simply equal to the derivatives of the separate functions added together. I am warning you, do not assume that this is going to work with products, that is, with multiplication or division. But right now we're just talking about addition and subtraction, and that is very straightforward. Let's do a quick example. The derivative with respect to x of all of this is equal to the derivative of their individual terms. Again, this is by the sum rule. When you're taking derivatives, you're not going to have to write out each rule every time like we did with the limit rules. However, I want to specify this as I'm teaching it so you understand what I'm doing step by step. The next rule I'm going to use is the constant multiple rule, and that allows me to pull the constants out. Finally, I'm going to use my power and constant rules to come up with the following. And finally, this is what I get as my answer. There's one more special derivative we're going to talk about, and that's the derivative of e to the x. What is e? e is equal to an irrational number, 2.718 and a whole bunch of other digits. And what makes e special is this. That is, if I take e and I raise it to the h power, subtract 1 from it, and divide it by 8, and let the limit of h approach 0, this is equal to the number 1. And here's a graph of e to the x, and the slope at 0 is actually equal to 1. So where does this get us? So the derivative of e to the x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the x plus h minus e to the x divided by h. And again, that's by the definition of the derivative. So let's go ahead and rewrite my exponent as such. I see both of my terms has an e to the x in it, so I'm going to factor that out. And now that I factored out that e to the x, I realize that the limit as h approaches 0 doesn't affect e to the x at all, so I can go ahead and pull that out. Well, I've already said the limit of h approaching 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h is equal to the number 1, so that means the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. It's the best derivative out there. And again, I'll write it out. The derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. One final thing to talk about, I can take derivatives higher than just the first derivative. I could take, for instance, the second derivative. The second derivative of f of x is simply the derivative with respect to x of the first derivative of f of x. And I can expand that to talk about any values of n. And the one thing I want to point out is if I talk about the nth derivative, I put that n in parentheses. So that f to the parentheses n is not f to the nth power. It's the nth derivative of f. So that just equals the derivative of the f to the n minus 1th derivative of x. And that's our first round of rules of differentiation.